What's up guys? So it is Saturday, March 21st, 2020, and I'm self-quarantined right now for the weekend. Still going to work on Monday, but that's besides the point. So I'm bored online shopping already. I'm going to set up the old Zephyr Magnum. We're going to go shoot some 3D with 1970s and 1980s technology. <laughs> We got an Easter card. This lady is awesome. Dear Cameron, I want to thank you for your purchase. I hope you get lots of use out of this site. I want you to know that I do appreciate your business. I hope you're having a wonderful and blessed week. Stay safe. Thanks so much. Lisa Seigler. Lisa, I'm sorry if you didn't want your name out there, but you're awesome. If anybody needs to buy anything off of eBay, I don't know what all she sells, but she does sell some old compound sites. So if you're looking for one of those, hit her up. Thank you, Lisa. Ah, oh, sweet. She threw in some Duck Dynasty stickers for me. So, just an old black Proline sight. This is with the brass pens. This is cool stuff. I actually used a little bit of both of these sites. I used the pens and this main mount off of the pen site. And then I used the crosshair housing and guard just because everything was fitting a little funky and I wanted to, and I thought it'd be better. So I mismatched a couple of things, which is pretty funny. It all went together just fine. Now I'm gonna put the stabilizer on here. And it doesn't fit either, so that's okay. So I'll just try a stabilizer off one of my other compounds, see if it'll fit. So I was hoping to go a little more old school than a bee stinger, but, I think the brass pans and the compound itself from 1970 will suffice. All right, there's only one thing left to do, and that is tie another D-loop. So where my rest initially sat, my feathers were gonna contact the pen guard, so I had to bring that down. And I'm not gonna fix this, but there's a knocking point here. I'm just gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna tie a loop on the bottom point. And we'll go see how this thing shoots. Okay guys, so we got her set up. I got a few arrows here and I'm gonna shoot at 10 yards. I don't really know how to tune this bow and don't really wanna spend the time doing it. So basically all I did was square it away to where I eyeball tuned it and that's even a little different because of how close this rest has to be to this riser. But I'm just gonna shoot a group here at 10. It'll be close enough I don't miss the whole bag. And I'm probably not gonna do a lot of tuning. Probably gonna be more just getting the sights set and going from there. Okay. So here's a 10 yard group. No, that's not super exciting as far as a group, but I'm not terribly mad at it either. I don't know what to expect out of this. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move that pin quite a bit up. I'm just gonna go shoot a group at 20 yards. I will say the, the biggest difference with this bow than a you know fairly modern compound is that it's got a super spongy wall, so you could really yank into it or you can stay really light. And I imagine that's gonna make a big difference in your ups and downs. So it'll be neat to kind of figure this out. Let's go shoot a 20. You know, 
So now the big selling point is micro adjustment pins and all that. These are more micro adjust than anything else. You've got two knurled sections here. This one closest, you can loosen that and adjust your up and down very minusculely and it doesn't change when you tighten it. And then if you loosen this, you can thread that pin in and out. That's, I'm not so sure we're making strides forward with this. I kind of like this. So any of you site manufacturers, bring back the threaded pin, baby. Shot felt pretty good. I'm just getting a good feel for this back wall. <clears throat> Go check these. All right, guys, so I'm no Robin Hood. These two down here are my second two. So I brought it down considerably from the first one and I moved it in and you can see the sight movements worked there. So I just gotta bring that brass pin in towards the riser a little more and that should center me up. the bat I can tell you this old compound shoots plenty well but it is a flaw pointer outer for sure man I just couldn't get that last one in there so there's my group of 20 yards with the Zephyr Magnum I can do better than that let's shoot another one I don't want you all to think the bow is as bad as I am So I got a few rounds in now. I can tell you a few things. If you have any hand torque in this bow, you'll notice it down there. There's also a lot of room for you to get ups and downs in the valley. So you just have to shoot this bow super strong and super relaxed all at the same time. I'm shooting okay groups, but uh, I finally got it sighted in and on spot there at 20 yards. So this group is gonna be my score. So I'm gonna go hang a Vegas face on there. It's all shot up, but still can give us an idea of what these look like. And I'm gonna shoot one end, Let's see what that looks like. We're gonna shoot one end right here. This target's all beat up, but I'm just interested to see if I can put three in the yellow. <laughs> See how we did. I think this was okay. All right, looks like we got an X. Hmm, ah, barely out. Okay, so we got two nines and an X, but they were all low right, so see, this could be a side adjustment. Could be shooting perfect 30 X's out here. All right guys, well I'm gonna cut this video here. 
you know, I've got a pretty good idea now of what this bow is capable of. That's pretty decent shooting. I am interested to get this on a 3D course and see what I can do. I just don't know when they're going to be open. So if you guys think of anything else cool that I can do with this bow to test it out before all this stuff is over with, I'm talking about the teen, the quarantine teen, let me know and uh, we'll do some kind of a challenge or whatever. See y'all next time.